What are six ways that a resilience leader can improve their presentation and speaking skills? I'm Brian Strausser, Principal and Chief Executive here at Brightpath, and welcome to our weekly insights video. Enhancing your ability to present and speak with confidence is something that's critical for a business continuity and crisis management leader. Here are six ways that I've thought of and used in the past to become a more effective presenter or speaker. The first one is pretty obvious. It's to master the subject matter that you're going to speak about. We want to make sure that you have deepened your knowledge and your understanding of resilience, of business continuity and crisis management and related areas. Being thoroughly versed in your subject matter not only boosts your confidence when you're speaking or presenting, but it also enables you to answer questions confidently and engage in discussions more effectively. It's an essential skill to stay updated with the latest trends, case studies, best practices, and technologies in your field. Number two is to think through and develop a clear and structured narrative to your presentation uh, or, or the speech that you're giving. You want to organize your content in a clear, logical manner. Start with a strong introduction that outlines the key points that you're going to cover. Use the body of your presentation, the very meaty middle here, to delve into details, providing relevant, relevant examples and case studies. Conclude with a summary that reinforces those main points that you started with and offers a call to action or clearly defines the next steps. This well-structured narrative will help you maintain audience engagement and ensure that your message is conveyed effectively. For me, this starts with understanding what I'm trying to accomplish with this presentation. And I always think about that before I put pen to paper in terms of outlining uh, my thoughts around the outline of the presentation and get into developing the material. But what am I trying to accomplish here? What's the narrative that I want to get across? And what do I want them to get, take away from this? And that helps me build that clear structure narrative. Number three is to have visual aids and materials like slides and charts and use them effectively in a way that enhances your presentation and doesn't take away from it. They should complement your presentation and speech and not overload the audience with information. We want to make sure that they're professionally designed, they're visually appealing, that they're easy to read. Use them to highlight your key points rather than make them a narrative. They're really there to help you illustrate complex concepts or present data in an easily digestible format. Number four is to practice. And particularly if you're not confident or you don't feel like your presentations are effective, you need to practice. Work on your verbal and nonverbal communication skills when you're practicing. That includes your voice modulation, your pacing, your body language. Practice speaking clearly, slowly, and confidently. Use pauses for emphasis and vary your tone to maintain the interest of your audience. Don't be boring. Nonverbal cues like eye contact, gestures, and facial expressions play a significant role in keeping the audience engaged. And that leads me to point five, which is engage the audience. You should develop techniques that fit with your personality and approach that make your presentations more interactive and engaging. That might include asking rhetorical questions, encouraging audience participation, or using real world scenarios that you know will resonate with the audience. Tailor your content and your delivery to suit that audience, whether they're executives or colleagues or external stakeholders. And number six, and finally, um, seek feedback and continuous improvement every time that you present uh, or give a speech or presentation. After each time, seek feedback from a trusted colleague or mentor that watched your presentation or that was in the audience. You want to be open to constructive criticism and use it as an opportunity for growth. This is how you get better. Consider recording your presentations when you can or even recording your practice sessions to self-evaluate and identify areas for improvement. Additionally, attending workshops or courses on public speaking uh, and presentation skills or participating in something like Toastmasters or a speaking organization, maybe your organization has an affinity network for speaking development, presentation development. These can all help provide valuable insights and techniques to enhance your abilities. Effective communication is key to your role as a resilience leader, particularly your ability to present upwardly in the organization, to be able to command the room, so to speak, um, particularly even in a crisis. Um, but by continuously working in these six areas, 
I think you can significantly improve your ability to convey critical information clearly and concisely uh, and persuade various stakeholders about the importance of crisis management and business continuity programs at your organization. That's it for this week's Weekly Insight here at Bright Path. We'll be back next week with another new episode. Be well. Thanks for watching our video. To learn more about how to manage uncertainty and disruption in your organization, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe to our video channel. And here are a few more videos that we've selected that will help you learn more about business continuity, crisis management, and crisis communications.